And tonight, more than 100 parents want the Haywood County Board of Education to do away with the district's mask policy. News 13's Samir Nefsi joins us live from the Haywood County Board of Education with the latest. Yeah, hey there. After nearly an hour and 20 minutes of public comment, the Board of Education here in Haywood County deciding to lift the masking mandate. More than 20 people from parents, grandparents, nurses, retired teachers, and even students all pleading with the board to get rid of masking policies. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Woo! The Haywood County Board of Education voting to make masking optional. For everyone inside district buildings, out of the 24 speakers, 20 expressing to the board that they feel the district is overreaching by continuing with masking protocols. One student telling the board point blank, quote, you're smothering me, end quote. Others saying they feel the quality of education for students is suffering due to what they call masking complications, creating issues like not being able to understand teachers. And my youngest, who is six, has never been in school without a mask. He doesn't know what his friend's smiles look like. He, do, he doesn't know how to read social signals. Um, it's, it's devastating for kids. Socially, emotionally, is one of my biggest concerns is social emotional because these kids have got to get back out in the world and we've got some work to do. If you are worried about getting sick, then by all means wear a mask. If you're not worried, then you shouldn't have to wear one. It should be your choice either way. I urge you to follow the CDC and DHHS guidance related to masking. Following the Board of Education decision, the Haywood County Health Department issuing a statement saying that they do not support the decision to make masking optional, writing area health care systems remain at or near the peak of prior surges, explaining, quote, the Haywood County School Board assumes full and total responsibility for medical decisions and the outcomes that result from their decision. And the Haywood County Health Department saying that they will remain available for the school district upon their request. And you really do get the feeling leaving tonight that parents and students are really excited for this next chapter, but the health department, as you just heard, remains concerned. I also want to point out students and staff members will be required to wear a face mask while on school buses. The mask requirement has been hotly debated for nearly two years, and people are still talking about it. News 13's Caitlin Pinter joins us live in Asheville. And Caitlin, you spoke with people and businesses about how they feel ahead of this decision. Yeah, we actually brought a poster board down to downtown Asheville this morning to see what people think about this. We got a lot of responses and each was a little different. Should Buncombe County's mask mandate continue or not? Uh, whatever the doctors are telling us to do, I do. There has not been a statewide mask mandate since May of 2021. Buncombe County ended its mandate for most settings at that time, but reinstated the mandate last August during the Delta COVID surge. I, I like the idea of masks just to be on the safe side. I feel like the effort to wear one is not that much compared to what the cost could be. Are you still concerned about catching COVID? Oh, yes. <laughs> I have not had it yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've tried to be careful. There continues to be a divide on this. No. No mask mandate? This former nurse says her child has been more sick than ever while wearing the mask. I completely changed my whole career because of everything. You left your job as, as a medical professional over, the, over that. Well, not just because of the mask mandate, just of everything that came about. Um, when COVID did hit, I worked on the COVID unit for over a year, so yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm done with it. Others say to gauge the effectiveness of the mandate, all you have to do okay. is look around. Are you guys have a mask mandate up here? We do. So not everyone pays attention to it, clearly, which is okay by me. Like I, I you know. So do you think they should still exist? If I think that in certain settings is probably appropriate and others not so much. The CDC's current advice is to wear the most protective mask indoors if you're immunocompromised or not fully vaccinated, or if you are fully vaccinated in an area of high or substantial transmission. Businesses we talked to in downtown Asheville today wouldn't go on camera about this, but one shop told us they want the mask requirement to continue because of all the people who go in and out of their store. Another business told us they were tired of telling people to wear their mask. Today, the city of Asheville took a step in forming the Reparations Commission. This is the group of people who help city leaders decide what reparations will look like in Asheville. News 13's Andrew James has more on the first round of interviews. 
18 people interviewed for the Reparations Commission Tuesday. From here, the Boards and Commissions Committee will recommend applicants for City Council approval. I'd like to welcome you to the City Council interviews for the Reparations Commission. The Reparations Commission will be made up of 25 members, five appointed by the Asheville City Council, and five appointed by the Buncombe County Commission. The remaining 15 representatives will be selected by the neighborhoods of areas with significant impact. City leaders are looking for people with expertise in the five impact focus areas, criminal justice, economic development, education, health care, and housing. The impact that I have experienced has been around education, workforce development, and economic development. One applicant, Cece Weston, spoke about her experience owning a learning center in Asheville, serving students from 2 to 15 years old. We struggle to find spaces. We don't have the economic resources to build these fantastic buildings. We don't have the economic resources to buy the land to build fantastic buildings. I think you would... Uh, a great candidate uh, for the reparations committee because you actually live in the area that's impacted. Another applicant, Karen Teal, is a retired educator from California. Having to face my own racism uh, and that, that explained, uh, partly explained why I was struggling with my students. She spoke about her personal experience and desire to learn more about race relations in Asheville. Have you given thought to how you as um, an educator could play an active role in working with white women in particular to decrease or to cause less harm to African-American students. Council will vote on appointments to the Reparations Commission during their next meeting, February 22nd. The city of Asheville has released all the applications for the candidates they interviewed for the Reparations Commission. We'll have a link to that in this story at WLOS.com.